Hi, welcome back. So in this video, I'm just going to go through how we write the equation of a line when we're working in three dimensions. So I'm going to draw just an arbitrary line in space here. And let's assume that we're given a point on the line. So a specific point that we were told is on the line, x naught, y naught, and z naught. That's x sub zero, y sub zero, and z sub zero. This specific point is in contrast to just any arbitrary point on the line. So any point of the form x, y, z that is on the line is just some other arbitrary point. Then the other thing we're going to need is a vector that's parallel to the line. This is just a vector that has the same direction as the line. Remember, vectors can be anywhere in space. They don't have a set start and end point, but I'm just going to draw it in standard position starting at the origin to make it a little easier to visualize. So our plan here is that we're going to write an equation that models motion along the line. So in three dimensions, if we want just a line and not like a surface, we're basically going to need to draw the line in space. So we're doing a motion of sorts rather than just like a fixed surface or something. So this means that the equation we come up with is going to depend on a parameter and that parameter is T. And I think of that as representing time. Okay, so let's get started. So we have this information we're starting with, and this is the information we're usually given. We're usually given a specific point and a vector that points in the right direction. Then we want to come up with the equation for the line. So some other things we're going to need is we're going to take a vector that starts at the origin and points to the point we were given. So we call this r sub zero or r naught, and this is a vector that points to our specific point. We basically just take the x naught, y naught, and z naught and make it into a vector. Then we're going to do another vector with the arbitrary point. So this is just r with respect to time. And this one has the time involved, the t, because it's going to be changing since it's any arbitrary point. That point could be anywhere on the line. So this vector is just x, y, and z, and it points to any point on our line. So looking at these two vectors, we can now do some manipulation with them, some operations, in order to get more information about the line. So if we look at r naught and then r as our two vectors, if we have this third vector that goes between the arrow side, the tail side of these, this vector lies along our line and we're gonna call it s. So you can see here that if we do r naught plus s, we're getting r, r of t. So by kind of putting these all together in this addition formula, we're getting some information about our line. This vector s lies on the line, and so this is good. We're finally sort of getting information about the line. This is super general at first when we're just trying to explain things, so bear with me, we'll get to the formula, I promise. So we see this s, this looks like it's on the line, but we're gonna need more information. Like what is this s vector? So let's look at a 3D model of this information. So I have the line here. The colors don't quite match up, but hopefully you can follow through. So I have my two vectors, my vector that points to the specific point and my arbitrary vector that's pointing at the arbitrary point. So as we let t change, so the time is changing, we can see that as we move that arbitrary point that moves with time, the vector is moving and it's sort of drawing out the whole line. So some things I wanna point out here, that vector that we were drawing as time changes, its magnitude changes as the time changes. So it's not like a fixed length, it changes length over time as it sort of draws out the line. And also our vector v, that one we started with that was parallel, it points in the same direction as s. So that vector we were given that was starting at the origin, if we look at then this s vector and compare them, they're pointing in the same direction, they both point in the direction of the line. And so we can take that vector v and scale it by time in order to match up with the s vector. Remember that vectors can exist anywhere in space. They don't have to just start at the origin like how we drew it, we were given it. We can think about moving that V to the line and then having the T parameter move that vector through time in order to draw out the whole line we're looking for. Basically, we're doing this because the S vector on the line, like that's sort of what we're looking for, right? Like we don't know the equation of the line, but we can assume that we were given a direction we wanted the line to go. So we were given a vector V. So we want to be using that information somehow. So putting this together, if we have r naught plus s equals r of t, 
So that's our vector equation, looking at the vectors from before. I can now replace s by t times the vector v. So for scaling it by that time, it's going to change and move depending on the time we're doing. And this is really actually our vector equation of a line. So let me rewrite all of this in sort of a more formal way and make sure we understand what all the pieces are. So we say that the vector equation of a line through the point x0, y0, z0 in the direction v is given by the following. We take r of t, that's a vector representing the line, and it's equal to r0, which is a vector that points to the point we were given, and we add it to the variable t, our parameter, times the vector v, where this vector was the one we were given for the direction. So it's almost like the r0 gets us to the place we want, it points to the point we want to be at, and then the t times the vector v gives us the direction. So this is our first version of the equation of a line. This is the vector form of the equation. But we can also write a line as a parametric equation. So what I'm going to do is just rewrite this. This is going to look very similar to what we had before, but now I'm just going to do a little more work to give us another version of the equation. So let's say we have the point x0, y0, z0, and the vector v. This time I'm going to give it some components, so a, b, and c. Then what we can do is we can write our vector version of the formula. That's r of t is equal to r0 plus t times the vector v. And putting in our information, we're taking the vector x0, y0, z0, and adding it to t times the vector v, which is a, b, c. Then I'm just going to distribute this and combine it all together for one vector. So when we do this, I'm going to distribute the t, and then I'm going to combine the components. So for my x component, I have x0 plus a times t. For my y component, I have y0 plus b times t. And for my z component, I have z0 plus c times t. And knowing that these are x, y, and z, we can write this as three separate equations. So I take x as a function of time is equal to x0 plus a times t. Then y as a function of time is equal to y0 plus b times t. And z as a function of time is equal to z0 plus c times t. And these would be my parametric equations of a line because they're actual equations with variables where the variable is t rather than a vector, which is what we had before. And together, these two things, the vector equation of a line and the parametric equation of a line, are our two formulas for how we're going to be writing equations of lines in three dimensions. I have a separate video where we go through some examples. This is just meant to give you the formulas and maybe give you a little background into where they came from. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.